Welcome to the Way of the Cross by Father Mark Toops. My name is Deacon Alan Holderness, and I will be the leader uh, for the Way of the Cross, and my assistant will be Jenny Fracasso. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May our contemplation of these sacred stations dispose us to the graces poured forth on the world from the cross. We cannot rely on our own strength, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. Therefore, bless us now that we might be open to receive. Bless our minds, that we might meditate on these timeless mysteries. Bless our ears, that we might hear your voice. Bless our lips, that we might speak your praise. Bless our hearts, that we might know your love. Give us, O oh Lord, an ever watchful heart, which nothing can ever lure away from you. A noble heart, which no unworthy affection can draw downwards. An upright heart, which no sin can warp. An unconquerable heart, which no tribulation can crush. A free heart, which no perverted affection can claim for its own. Bestow on us, Lord, understanding to know the diligence to seek you and wisdom to find you, a life that pleases you and a hope that may embrace you at the last. May our contemplation of these sacred stations dispose us to the graces poured forth on the world from the cross. May we grow to be obedient without complaint, poor without regret, patient without murmur, humble without pretense, joyous without frivolity, and truthful without disguise. Be with us, Jesus, our Lord and our God, for with great humility we seek to make pilgrimage in your footsteps. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Thus by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Let us contemplate Jesus standing beside Pilate as his eyes behold the frenetic crowds that have filled the praetorium. He can also see the remnants of palm branches that still line the streets from his entrance into Jerusalem a mere five days earlier. Let us consider Jesus silently following the words of Psalm 57 as he stands atop the steps of the praetorium. And here's the chance of crucify him, crucify him. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. Be merciful to me, O Lord, be, mer be merciful to me. For you are my soul, take refuge. In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills the purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put shame to those who trample upon me. God will send forth his mercy and have his faithfulness. The second station, Jesus carries the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
The soldiers clothed him in a purple cloak, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage before him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, put on his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. Let us contemplate Jesus in his prison cell as he beholds the soldiers who kneel before him in mockery and homage. Jesus can see the moment when these men will kneel before him in worship at the hour of their deaths. Together, let us consider Jesus silently reciting the following words of Psalm 25 as he endures the mockery of the Roman soldiers. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. O guard my life and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we were healed. Let us contemplate Jesus as he falls under the weight of the cross. The merciless scourging from the Roman soldiers has left him weakened. The wounds on his back add to Jesus' struggle to bear his cross. And with each stride, he is pierced with the pain of this journey. As he collapses to the ground, all Jesus can see are the feet of those who swarm around him in ridicule. As Jesus hears their jeers in slander, let us together consider him silently reciting the following words of Psalm 35. At my stumbling they gathered in glee, they gathered together against me. Cripples whom I did not know slandered me without ceasing. They impiously mocked more and more, gnashing at me with their teeth. You have seen, O Lord, be not silent. O Lord, be not far from me. Vindicate me, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. Let us contemplate Jesus as he meets his mother on the way of the cross. The Psalms were at the heart of Jewish spirituality and therein would have been at the heart of the life for the Holy Family in Nazareth. Jesus and Mary would have chanted the Psalms daily. Let us consider Jesus' eyes meeting his mother's eyes, then just as they would have done in Nazareth. Let us imagine Jesus intoning the opening verse 
and then the two of them together reciting the remainder of the Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they were marching out, they came upon a man from Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. Let us consider Jesus looking deep into the eyes of Simon the Cyrenian. Simon's arms meet the arms of Jesus wrapped around the cross. Simon can feel the exhaustion of Jesus' body begging for help. As their eyes meet and their arms intertwine, Jesus whispers the words of Psalm 69 to Simon. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, O Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be brought to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. For zeal for your house has consumed me, and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. But as for me, my prayer is you, O Lord. An acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your mercy, answer me, but I am afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, set me on high. I will praise the name of the God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteem him not. Let us contemplate Veronica wiping the face of Jesus. As she tenderly wipes away the blood from his face, Jesus' eyes shine bright beneath the removed blood. Together, let us consider Jesus looking deep into Veronica's eyes and offering the words of Psalm 20 in gratitude. The Lord answered you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. Now I know the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven. With mighty victories by right hand, give victory to the king, O Lord. Answer us when we call. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. Let us contemplate Jesus as he lies face down on the ground under the weight of the cross, and silently recites the following words of Psalm 56. Have mercy on me, O God, for men trample upon me. All day long foes oppress me. 
My enemies trample upon me all day long, for many fight against me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust without fear. For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. But Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Let us contemplate Jesus remembering the words of Psalm 34 as he meets the women of Jerusalem. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears toward their cry. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. The Lord redeems the life of his servant. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, Make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Let us contemplate Jesus as he falls for the third time. Even with Simon's assistance, the abuse during his arrest in the garden, the exhaustion of being imprisoned, and the torture of the scourging have all taken a toll on his body. In that moment, Jesus could have clung to the words of Psalm 41. My enemies say of me in malice, when will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me in that my enemy has not triumphed over me, but you have upheld me because of my iniquity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. Let us contemplate Jesus praying Psalm 22 as he is stripped of his garments. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. 
Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. I count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And from my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my help, hasten to my aid. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Let us contemplate Jesus praying Psalm 116 as he is nailed to the cross, recalling how these were the very words Jesus prayed as he left the Last Supper. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol will hold me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beg you, save my life. What shall I render to the Lord? for all his bounty to me. I will lift up the chalice of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. The 12th station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. After this, Jesus, knowing that all now was finished, said to fill, fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there. So they put a sponge full of the vinegar on a hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can man do to me? I shall not die. I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and I have become my salvation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. The 13th station, the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from re remaining on the cross, on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once there came out blood and water. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. When Jesus was an infant, Mary would have held him close and rocked him to sleep. Let us contemplate Mary praying Psalm 55 as she rocks back and forth, holding the body of her son in her arms. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my supplication. My heart is in anguish within me. The terror of death 
have fallen upon me. But I will call upon God, and the Lord will save me. He will deliver my soul in safety from the battle that I rage. For many are arrayed against me, but I will trust in you. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. When Jesus was a child, Mary would have placed Jesus in his bed when he had fallen asleep. Let us contemplate Mary praying Psalm 119 as she places the body of her son in the tomb. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your ordinances before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. This is my comfort in my affliction, that you praise, that your promise gives me life. Godless men utterly er deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. O merciful God, grant that I may ever perfectly do your will in all things. Let it be my ambition to work only for your honor and glory. Let me rejoice in nothing but what leads to you nor grieving for anything that leads away from you. May all passing things be as nothing in my eyes. May all that is yours be dear to me, and you, my God, dear above them all. May all joy be meaningless without you, and may I desire nothing apart from you. May all labor and toil delight me when it is for you. Make me, O Lord, obedient without complaint, poor without regret, patient without murmur, humble without pretense, joyous without frivolity, and truthful without disguise. Give me, O God, an ever watchful heart which nothing can ever lure away from you. A noble heart, which no unworthy affliction can draw downwards to the earth. An upright heart, which no evil can wrap. An unconscionable heart, which no tribulation can crush. A freer heart, which no prevent affliction can claim for its own. Bestow on me, O God, understanding to know you, vigilance to seek you, and wisdom to find you, a life which may please you and hope which may embrace you at the last. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.